Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. I am Annette Capps, and today we have a special program on the subject of faith and confession with my friend, Pastor Michelle Steele. We will be discussing the topic that has always been the hallmark of the ministry of my father, Charles Capps. Through the revelation of the power of words, my father's life was transformed, and he shared this powerful principle with everyone he met. You must have an understanding of these principles and how they work for them to be effective in your life. It's not magic, and it's not a matter of following a formula. Your words are only effective in changing circumstances if you believe what you are saying. The first step is to put God's Word in your heart, and you can do that by speaking the promises of God out loud. I pray the Holy Spirit will open your heart to the message today. My name is Michelle Steele, and today I have with me a very special and honored guest, Annette Capps, who is the president of Capps Ministry. Her father, who founded the ministry, Charles Capps, has so many teachings that have changed my life and established my life in the Word that it is one of my greatest honors and privileges to have her here today talking about a brand new resource that their ministry has developed that includes... 14 DVDs and CDs, as well as the book, Faith and Confession, How to Activate the Power of God in Your Life, that comes along with a study guide. I am so thrilled because this is a, a compilation of some of the greatest revelations and teachings that Charles Capps brought into the body of Christ. And it is in a way r compiled together that it is very um, instrumental if you have a small group, if you have a men's meeting, a women's meeting, if you have a home group Bible study that you would like to have some good teachings, this is a great resource. The 14 DVDs are from a specific time that uh, Charles Capps was ministering in a Bible school setting. So the anointing that's on those DVDs and the teaching is aimed at really getting into those students who were going into the ministry, the foundation of the word of faith, the foundation of confessing and, and standing on the word and sowing the word like a seed. So I want to encourage you to really listen in today because I believe that as we discuss the the truths that are in these books, uh, in these resources that people are going to see the importance of being able to add them to their life. Tell me uh, a little bit about um, what, uh, when, when you look at these resources, what you desire to, to impart into the people as they get these, these truths. Well, my dad once said, the Word of God is so simple, you have to have help to misunderstand it. And we've had a lot of help over the years, <laughs> yes. just religious teaching. And this is just going to what does the Word of God say? I believe there are truths that have been hidden in the Word of God that weren't seen uh, up until this teaching really got its uh, uh, zenith in the 80s. And it sort of began in the 70s. But this was a move of the Spirit of God. Yes. This was the anointing of God, just like the anointing for um, the tent revivals in the 50s, 40s and 50s. There was anointing in the 70s for the charismatic renewal. There was an anointing for this, what is called the faith movement. And it was a revelation of, you know, up to that point, it was all God's up in heaven. How are we gonna get God to move and do something? And all of a sudden, the teaching that the kingdom of God is within you, yes. that bursts forth under the anointing of the Spirit. and people came out of denominational churches, people came out of every movement to hear what the Word said yes. and to learn that it's not us trying to get something from God in heaven 
and get him to do something, it is changing us. The Word changes us. And the way the Word changes us is by the Word causes faith to come in our heart. It changes the way we see things. It changes the way we hear things. It changes the way we think. And so if we change ourselves by the help of the Holy Spirit and with the Word of God and by speaking the Word of God, and we learn that God wants us to be blessed and to have help in every area of our life, and we really believe that, then we'll begin to take certain actions that change the world around us. Yes. And that's called corresponding actions, right? Corresponding actions. Corresponding actions, because uh, in James we learn that faith without works is dead yes. being alone. So you can say, oh yes, I have faith in God, I trust in God. I heard that all my life growing up in a, a full gospel church. Oh yes, we trust the Lord, we just trust the Lord. What they really meant was, I have prayed and begged God to change this. I begged God to answer my prayers, but it's all up to Him. If He wants to heal me, He will. If He wants me to be blessed, He will. If He wants so-and-so to be saved, they will. I'm just gonna sit back. Uh, that's faith without works. Yes. There's a point in faith where, yes, we trust God to do it, but sometimes we have to take steps. And those steps, my dad called corresponding actions. Yes. He actually has two chapters, one about corresponding action and then one called a balance to corresponding action, which brings so much clarity. Exactly. Corresponding action is acting according to your faith. Yes. And a lot of people act according to their faith. <clears throat> they have no faith, they're in unbelief. And so they say, <laughs> we can't do it. It's impossible. But Jesus said, all things are possible. Yes. To him that believeth. So it's faith. Last session we talked mostly about words and speaking the word into your heart. Yes. Speaking the word in your heart is what causes the faith to come. Yes. And so faith without works is dead. So that means if you really have faith, that God is going to meet your need, then you're going to zip the lip, shut your mouth, you're not going to say, it doesn't look like it's happening, it's not happening, what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? You're going to prepare to succeed. Yes. By your steps. Now somebody said, well am I just supposed to say I've got the money, I can pay my light bill when I don't, that's lying. No, you say what God's word says. This is where people get all mixed up with, I'm telling a lie. Why would I want to do that? You're not telling a lie. Did the Word of God say that He's blessed you with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ Jesus? Is that in the Bible? That's in the Bible. Do you think God's Word would lie? No. It is impossible for God to lie. <laughs> That's right. So then we can go and we can look at some other scriptures. We can look at, at what uh, Jesus said when he talks about if God's provided for the birds of the air and the lily of the valley, and how much more will he provide for you? Can we believe what Jesus said? Yes. Then if we really believe that, how are we going to act? Are we gonna sit in our chair and cry and bawl and squall and cause, call 40 people to pray because we're going under? You know, one time my dad was saying, God, it's getting, I prayed and it's getting worse. Everything looks horrible, it's getting worse. I've got less than I had before, I'm sick. And all of a sudden God interrupted his prayer and he said, I would appreciate it if you'd quit coming to me and telling me what the devil says. <laughs> and then my dad realizes he's not praying in faith. He's complaining in unbelief. Yes. It's getting Under the worse. guise of prayer. Under the guise of prayer. Yes. <laughs> and faith without works is dead. So instead of, he learned to change that. Coming to God say, Father, your word says yes. that you'd supply all of my need. Your word says that himself, Jesus, for my sickness, carried my infirmities, and with his stripes, I was healed. Not were, not going to be, not hoped to be. Yes. It says I was healed. 
And if, it, if I was, then I am. Yes. And I thank you that your word is true. It is forever established in heaven. And I stand upon your word. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what circumstances look like. I am moved by what I believe in my heart and I believe in my heart your word is true. Yes. A lot of people can't say that because you confront them with that. And I have people write in the ministry all the time. Oh my goodness, you could read the letters and bless their hearts. They're trying to get there. They're trying to get there. But they'll write and say, please pray with me because I have this horrible situation. But they don't say what they want the end result to be. What do I pray? I don't know what they're believing for. Yes. When they write their letters, it sounds like they're believing to, that everything's a mess and it's going to stay that way. Give me an answer. Give me a solution. And this is what is in here. It's the solution. It's the, the answer. answer. Yes. And so corresponding action, if you believe God's taking care of it, you don't go around telling everybody that things are bad. I'm going under. We're going to lose our house. You may be faced with that in your life, but you don't go around saying that. You say God's word instead. Now, does that mean something instantaneous is going to happen? Maybe, maybe not. Normally, you've got to change what's going on on the inside of you before yes. the outward circumstances change. And so the first thing you do is your corresponding action is keep your mouth shut. And the next corresponding action is you do what you can do to pay your mortgage payment. Yes. You don't sit there and go, I'm just going to sit here and wait for God to drop money on me from heaven. That's not the way that it works. No. And so dad taught this because a lot of people heard the message and that's what they did. Okay, God, I'm going to just wait here and you supply my needs. So I'm just going to sit here. I'm not going to work. I'm not, I'm not going to go to town. I'm not going, I'm just going to sit here. And all they did was become homeless. Because there was no balance. There was no so balance. Their, their, their corresponding action wasn't in line with their faith. It was in line with a presumption. He talked about in the book the presumption versus when someone has really established faith that comes by the yes. Word of God in their heart. And in talking about the balance, he was encountering because we hear about, and even today, people who hear the formula of faith and don't have the foundation of these truths like we're taught here in this, this resource, they will write a hot check and say, well, I'm writing it by faith that by the time it hits the bank, the money's going to be there. But that's not, that's not a corresponding action. The corresponding action he, he indicates in the book, you might write out the check, but don't put it in the mail. That's right. Until the money's in the bank. That's right. Because then it's not faith. It's a hot check and it's illegal. That's right. And That's so right. that balance, there were some other examples and he uses a phrase that is earmarked for me. I can hear his voice say it. Yeah. Don't go whole oh. hog when half ready. Tell me about some of the different experiences that brought him to that, that truth. Well, as you develop your faith and you learn what God has provided for you and you start speaking God's word, you start acting on God's word with corresponding actions, it might start with something like, let's say you have a headache. You know, instead of popping a, an aspirin or something, you say, Lord, your word says, with the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And you begin, to, and your headache goes away. So then you start going down that way, say you have uh, migraine headaches. And so it doesn't go away. You continue to confess the word and all of a sudden it occurs to you <clears throat> that the stress you're going through at your job is what's causing your migraine headache. And then the Holy Spirit shows you how to deal with that stress or get another job and your migraine headache's gone. That is walking out in corresponding action to the faith. The problem is people hear this, okay, with the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. So what that means is I'm healed, so I'm just throwing away all my medicine. Yes. I mean, people that are diabetic, oh, the Bible says that I'm healed, so I'm just going to quit taking my insulin. I'm going to throw it out. I'm healed. It's not in here. Right. They heard it up here. It's in their head, and faith won't work in your head. Faith works in your heart. Yes. You have to become fully 
convinced that that's true before you step out with something like stopping taking your medicine with diabetes, continue to take it. And then the doctor says, you know, I think you should cut back because it's getting better. Yes. So you go from step to step. Do, do people get instantly healed sometimes? Yes. But we're talking about healing from developing your faith, not the miraculous type uh, healings, which gifts has to do with the gifts of healing healings. Healing anointings, yeah. So whole hog one half, Freddie, I, I, I like that term because people get inspired, you know, and they jump out there to do something. But you need to know it's in your heart and you're convinced of it first, not just leaping off the cliff. You know, I heard one um, uh, minister say one time that faith is stepping out over the aching void. And that's where people stop. <laughs> They don't hear the rest of what that sentence is. Faith is stepping out over the aching void with nothing but the Word of God beneath you. Yes. And a lot of people just step out over the aching void under the inspiration of what they heard and they just jump off with nothing underneath them. Yes. And that's what's called going whole hog when half ready. Oh, that's great. And they just run off the cliff. And that's not what my dad ever taught. No. I want to make that very plain to anybody's watching this program right now. My dad, Charles Capps, never taught stepping off of a cliff, ever. He taught that you develop your faith and you act only as far as your faith will go. Yes. He has a whole chapter about that and he uses an example of someone who came to him and said, uh, and, and he said the emphasis, his quote was, don't don't forsake common sense yes and call it faith don't and give someone up. someone asked him do you use fertilizer on your farm yes. and his response to them was do you put gas in your car right <laughs> because sometimes people hear the this formula of faith they hear just the 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 first concepts without establishing the faith in their heart and they will jump out of the boat so to speak without having the established strength of the word in their heart to back up what they're acting on. And it wreaks havoc not only in their lives, but in the lives of their family and everyone that knows them. Yes. Because that's where you get that, well, I know so-and-so, they believe God and they died. Yeah, faith didn't work for them, they called it. Uh, but my question is, how do you know a person has faith in their heart? You know, we. It's not our job to judge other people whether they have faith or not have faith because we don't know. But I do know one thing, faith only comes from hearing the Word of God. Yes. And stepping out over the aching void without the Word of God is a recipe for disaster. Yes. You say, well, I've got three scriptures, so no, that's not what I'm saying. You know in your heart what the Word of God says and then you also know what the Spirit says to you. Yes the Holy Spirit. People that do this, do they sit down and say, okay, Lord, I know what your word says. With the stripes of Jesus, I was healed and I believe your word. Is it time for me to cut back on my medication? See, th this is the step that gets left out. Yes. Do you sit and ask the Lord and then do you confer with your doctor? Doctor, I would like to reduce my medication. And the doctor says, well, I don't know about that. And you say, well, could we try it? And you say this to the doctor. You don't go to the doctor's office and say, I believe the word of God. It says with the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed and I'm quitting my medicine. <laughs> and he's gonna say, there goes one of those crazy faith people. Yes. One of those name it and claim it people. You talk to the doctor the way the doctor understands. Yes. Am I to the point? Is there a way that we could reduce this? You see, there's certain just steps you take. At the level where your faith is. Right, but I, I saw brother so-and-so and he quit and he got healed. Taking medicine or not taking medicine doesn't heal you. The Word of God heals you. It won't stop you from getting it healed either. It won't stop you from being healed. <laughs> Amen. I know people, they were on medication, they started getting sick, they went to the doctor, I don't know what's wrong. He says, cut back. They cut back. Oh, I feel much better. It's not going to keep you from being healed. See, a yes. lot of people in the tent revival days of the 40s and 50s thought, you know, if I'm crippled and I throw away my crutches, it'll heal me. It'll force God to heal me. Force God to heal me because I've thrown them. No, 
No, you don't force God to do anything because God has already done it. It's getting it in your heart. Yes, so valuable, such an important thing. We're talking about uh, these truths from the Word of God that were brought to us through the ministry of Charles Caps that are compiled together in this resource, Faith and Confession Bible School, 14 DVDs, six CDs, as well as the Faith and Confession book and a study guide. And I encourage, if you're a pastor, if you're a home group leader and you're looking for some resources, this is great for small groups, it's great for your whole congregation. Just pull your church together and, and have 14 weeks of Faith and Confession Bible School. Your life will be changed. This is something that will help you establish these truths in a sound, um, uh, strong way in your life so that you have more than just the formula because uh, you need to have the whole concept of how the Word works in your life. And this is a great tool and resource. So we're so grateful to have this available to us. Thank you for putting this together and making this available to us. I want to encourage you if you're watching me today and you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, everything that we've talked about, believing God with the heart, sowing the seed into the ground of your heart, all of these truths are available to the believer in Christ Jesus. And if you've never received Jesus, His life, He laid down on Calvary. He went to the cross and He died the death that we deserved to pay the sin debt, to redeem our lives from destruction. And today, receiving Jesus is as simple as believing in your heart that He died on the cross for you and that God raised Him from the dead and declaring with your mouth, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. And I want you to do that right now. If that's you and you have never received Jesus, today is the day of your salvation. Pray this out of your heart with me. Jesus, I believe that you died in my place. I believe that God raised you from the dead. And today I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I receive you as my Savior. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me, Lord, and allow your word to lead me and guide me into the plan that you have for my life. If that's you, you have prayed that prayer, believing in the heart and confessing with your mouth, you are saved. And I want to encourage you, Get into the Word of God. Get a Bible. Start reading your Bible. It is the manual for your success. Get into a local church. The local church is the hope of the world, the pillar, and the ground of the truth. And I encourage you to uh, go on to the information that you've seen on CAPS Ministry and get in uh, your hands these resources. Well, thank you for joining us today for this special broadcast with Pastor Michelle Steele. Pastor Michelle graciously helped us with writing and publishing the Faith and Confession study guide that we spoke about today. And we are making this complete Bible school package available for $225 plus shipping and handling. There are 14 DVDs, six CDs, and then the 265 page book on Faith and Confession along with this study guide. Now this is a great package for personal study or for churches, Bible classes, and Sunday school groups. What is really outstanding to me is the anointing on these DVDs and the practical nature of that teaching. You know, it clears up so many misunderstandings on the subjects of faith and confession. Now for those of you who just want to dip your toes in the water, we are offering the book only by itself for $16 plus shipping and handling, or you can order the study guide. It's by itself for $20 plus shipping and handling. That's a 265 page book on faith and confession for 16 or the faith and confession guide for $20 plus shipping and handling. Now this is a very small investment for something that could radically change your life. 
call 877-396-9400, or you can go to our website at caps.tv. That's C-A-P-P-S dot TV. Now, I want to share with you some of the practical topics that are covered in this book. There's a, um, a subheading. It's called Faith Won't Work in the Head. Faith won't work in the head. Faith works in the heart. And my dad says, this is where so many people get into trouble. They try to operate faith out of the head. They think all they have to do is say it. They say, well, Mark 11, 23 says, I can have what I say, so I'm just going to start saying the things I want. Well, a certain man said to a friend of mine, I'll tell you what, this faith and confessions teaching doesn't work. And he replied, oh, why do you say that? He said, well, I confessed 300 times in one day that I had a new car and I didn't get it. Well, you can see that all he had was the formula. He thought it was just some magic formula or something. He had the idea that if you just say it, the car will automatically appear in your garage. No, that is not the way it works. That is not the application of scriptural faith. All he had was the formula. He totally missed the principle. Faith will work, but faith must be developed. You know, we receive letters every day from people whose lives have been changed by these principles as they dedicated themselves to studying and acting on God's Word. Now, the important thing is that you dedicate yourself to the study of the Word because it will only work if you are fully persuaded that your words come to pass. You must believe that they come to pass. Now, I really believe this will be a blessing in your life. Call 877-396-9400 or go to our website at caps.tv. God bless you. May his best be yours, and may the word of God come alive in your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, and in your body. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.